Music has always been important to me. It's important now. It will always be important to me. In a way, I think it would be fair to say that music has changed my life. I think it is probably of listening to the radio. And uh, I, I was living in County Clare, and it was around the time of the change from wet and dry batteries. But it would have been something as eclectic and dingy on Monday nights, Keely House. But then much later, um, I think my mother uh, spoke about playing the, playing the violin. And I only heard her play the piano once when we went back to visit where she had come from, Liscarra. I think as well, when I think of my mother's uh, uh, interest, she liked Mario Lanza and she liked listening to Sidney McCune. Uh, I never played uh, any instrument myself. If I had, I, I was very interested, and I've often uh, said this to friends of mine, I would have been interested in the saxophone. Keith Donald and <laughs> myself and Mick Lally did a tribute to Martin O'Giron once, with Keith playing Autumn Leaves, and I was uh, reading a poem of my own, Lally read Marchin's poem Stitcher, but I've always uh, uh, liked the saxophone. Uh, at the moment, uh, you, I think one's, ta one's taste changes, one's ear changes too, uh, but I probably at this stage uh, have gone on to listening to cello music. I held the view, and I've often said it and repeated it, that if every child in the country had access to a musical instrument, if every child was able to swim, and if every child was able to read, we had a fantastic equipment, no matter what happened in life. And it would have been, it would, it would be a great achievement for a country to achieve that. I also was very interested in a project I didn't get to finish. I had started it in a pilot way, which was one about 93 to 97 when I was Minister for Culture, I thought of all of the musical instruments that are in all of the attics, bought by parents for child improvement purposes, if they all were given life again. And I had in mind a scheme in which was a bit ambitious, that it, all the instruments would be repaired and they'd be put into a music bank. And after three or four years, they'd be given back, repaired, and with a recording of the people who played on them and so on. So I think um, I often, as minister, attended uh, events that were aimed at buying instruments for the, for the exceptionally talented at the top end. But I often thought afterwards, and this is why uh, um, I remember in Crumlin, for example, uh, Sister Bernadette's, uh, I go, have been out there quite a few mm -hmm. times. And that was just extraordinary to see how, from once the children had access to the music instruments, their parents became involved. And then as people began to sing and their choirs began and suddenly the, I went out just before Christmas and the whole of Crumlin was out and they were all involved in music in different ways. It's such a wonderful amount, can, such a wonderful amount can be achieved through music and it's very simple. The other part of it which is interesting is to see very small children with very large instruments and the affection and care they have for their instrument. I go quite often to the the concert hall and uh, I love that I think that for example the festival of music from the, the, the Dublin VC which is just an incredibly high standard well I think music is interesting if not just for an aesthetic reason and building up an appreciation and an exercise if you like of the senses but uh, I've seen marvelous things happen in music uh, George Lawrence's theories, for example, in, in Central Europe, uh, have been applied in education, where people, uh, you know, in the school, you, you play music at the very beginning, so as to get everyone settled into a receptive frame. And then you sp play music again at the end of the evening. These techniques have been transported by other people for practical purposes, like accelerated learning of languages and so forth. I think that music and therapy I've seen marvelous advances in that, and particularly music uh, combined with dance, 
which I visited very recently in Limerick. Uh, it, it was a great uh, use, a fantastic use. The other side of it is, is a simple one uh, for parents and intergenerational relationships. Uh, you know, I remember myself as a parent when I'd hear the piano going downstairs, I knew that the, my sons were home, one of them or something or other. And really the music was like a reassurance in a way. I have also remember different challenges from different other members of my family that that uh, they would express uh, anxiety and uh, tension through 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 p playing the piano. All of my children play piano, I think now, but one of them, two of them, I won't say, are, 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 are play more regularly. I would think one composes, and, uh, and that's very satisfactory to me. Uh, I think that there are other lovely instruments that. I don't hear so often, but uh, I like uh, the, the uh, last night if it turned out music of my life. I was at uh, I was at um, Vicar Street listening to Martin Hayes and Mint Owens and so on. And Martin Hayes, of course, is a genius, but that's Odo Love singing and Ear Love and that beautiful combination of talent. Personal. Okay, music as. Uh, music, different music has appealed to me at different times of my life. I actually believe that that's true of the life cycle anyway. I've often said in an outrageous generalisation, uh, everybody's time for opera comes. Uh, I like listening to uh, uh, opera now. Uh, I've always, I've liked to, I've made my way through opera for a long time since uh, Gigli and Yossi Biore and on through to Pavarotti and to the present so that's what I really like. I like the, 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 to hear the extraordinary full sound of the, of, 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 the, of the tenor's voice mostly. Well, though I, in many ways, I suppose one's admiration is for the baritone. Anyone whose own voice is near tenor actually secretly envies baritone. Well, of course, I'm quite famous for having gone to the Rolling Stones conference concert and all of those in my black silk shirt and uh, in, uh, I've, uh, in fact Henry Martin Charles saved from the fire of the Slain Castle a photograph of myself standing there in sandals with my black silk shirt open the whole way and, the, uh, and uh, enjoying it. I loved those at outings. They were great those early days at the concerts. Um, I'm sorry I miss Leonard Cohn the last visit, I mean, I'm told it was extraordinary, the one in, in Sligo. But I have been to Electric Picnic, of course, and I enjoyed that. I really liked that because of the fact that it was such an inclusive event in all ages and all the other things. I actually read poems and did poetry Ireland there. And also I spoke about uh, the Rio Conference on the Environment. There's some really, the really uh, people who know what the world is about actually are at Electric Picnic. So I've been at, uh, yes, I would go to concerts, yeah. The, some I enjoyed more than others. I actually enjoyed the, that one that, uh, that, ma that uh, people talked about. Well, I was writing just, be I wrote for Hot Press in 1982 to 1992. But I actually probably en enjoyed the ones when I was out in the crowd myself and there was a bit of space more than I, uh, than there were times when I was backstage with a, an access of the, uh, stages uh, pass uh, but you see then and uh, I've uh, when those of us who were involved with hot press there for a while when uh, when I was writing for hot press it was in Bill Graham's time and through Dick and Lynch and on we go uh, it was really a marvelous group of people hot press have been very very good to young musicians too uh, there are people as well whose friendships I value were involved in music uh, like Lee Mo Wayne Lee and um, then People know that uh, I know Leo and uh, so it but I recorded them with uh, with uh, the stunning, uh, with Joan and Steve uh, in the Tigers in Galway. There his very last CD as the stunning as one of my poems, the mountain. I recorded two poems with them on 
and with the stuff that Edward the Mountain was the one we used. And then I went on the road just during my, early on and during my presidential campaign with Mary McPartland and her band. Uh, I did four gigs, um, uh, one in uh, Larry Kane, one in Mara Hamilton, uh, one in Bray and one in John Waterfield. Bray was brilliant. We actually recorded material off of the Bray one, which is good. And Mara Hamilton's acoustics were fantastic as well. I would do something like five uh, poems in each half, but then I did one to an accompaniment with my, a poem of mine that has been put to, to music on, uh, on uh, Victor Hara. Enormously, I think that uh, I think I wish I had. I wish I had, I often wish, but there's no point in doing that as well. I wish I'd approached it more systematically. I've been rather like a magpie in it. It's very important for me to 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 to, to have access to the music I want at the particular time. Uh, I I am a Johnny Cash fan. That again has been much commented upon. Uh, but um, I think that the later Johnny Cash uh, songs are fantastic. I like The Beast in Me, for example. I have people practically analysing the precedent because of that. But uh, the fact is, is that they're great haunting songs. Uh, I would know uh, Willie Nelson's music because I lived in the Midwest um, in the 19, late 1960s and 70s briefly for brief periods. So I know that kind of music as well, written in Boxcar Willie and so on, which is probably the point at which I stopped there. <laughs>